What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. And you already know who we got in the room. We got your boy Forbes George, Cartier Carter, and Jackpot Jacqueline. Well, how y'all doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Finally back in my home in LA. Got my setup. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited for this today's episode. Excited to be no longer living a digital nomad lifestyle as fun as it was. <laughs> and Jacqueline, how about you? I'm doing well. I see you guys with your melanin millionaire gear on. I love it. I love it. How are you, George? Hey, you know, I, I can't complain, man. I just kind of broke the news. I mean, y'all obviously already knew, but broke the news on social social media that the wife and I are expecting. So got a little one on the way. Later this week, we're going to announce the sex of the of the little one, the gender. So we're excited about that. OK, yeah. let's get it. Yeah, so we got a you know little 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 billionaire in the making. You know what I'm saying? Baby, baby billionaire. So they, that, that's a new merch. New merch coming soon. Billionaire coming soon. So now nah, we love it, man. Really excited about that. And just excited about the momentum, man. The energy since the, the rebrand has been just amazing. Um on social, inside the community. And so we're just really excited for uh to, to keep going this thing. So of course, Jacqueline, let us know what are we discussing today. Today, we have a hot topic. We're talking about who is stealing your money without you knowing. Mm. Mm. Somebody stealing my money right now? Mm -hmm. Somebody is. And we're calling that somebody inflation. We're talking about inflation. It's, it's not super sexy, but it is an important topic to make sure that you're aware of when handling your finances. So inflation, getting started. You know, when you hear your your grandparent or your parent say, oh, I remember when gas was 25 cents a gallon. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, OK, yeah, gas is not 25 cents a gallon. It's like four dollars. Right. Five in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> or think about when you go to the grocery store and the candy bar that you used to buy as a kid used to be 79 cents. And now it's a dollar fifty. Right. We're talking about inflation here. We're talking about a general rise in prices. Yeah. And, you know, it's so crazy because it, it feels so bogus to me that just like it's like literally the opposite of the definition of the word economy. Right. Like economy is supposed to mean we're super efficient. And over time, we get better at building things. And as a result of it, the price should go down. But in reality, it's like our economy is the exact opposite of the definition of the word economy. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like just arbitrarily, like Jack, when you talked about another episode, like education inflation, why is this, are we getting more stuff? No, <laughs> it's just, it's crazy how the system works, but the game is the game and we got to understand how to play it, which is why we are not your, your granddad's financial advisor. And we always are recommending make more money, right? One nice. of the, the biggest yeah. hedges against, you know, inflation is getting to the bags. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a bubble. This might sound whatever, however it might come across, but like, I can't remember the last time I checked gas prices. I mean, I got to get the gas anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if gas is going to break the bank. Then I got bigger problems than the gas prices. You know and so, no, 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 wait. I can't remember the last time I filled up like half a tank or like a quarter of a tank. Like, I no, I need a full though. tank of gas. <laughs> And George, you posted it and just decided to side now. He was like, um, saying I'm gonna get gas in the morning is the worst decision you could make it as an adult. It's gonna- <laughs> You're right. Like, go ahead and get that gas. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But to Jacqueline's point, I remember those days though, just throwing a quick little five. Remember when five dollars was gas money, had people riding with you, they used to throw you five dollars. <laughs> like, here's some gas money. But man, what if those are the good old days, college. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that we're removed from that. But nonetheless, inflation, right? It's that Real. silent killer, it's that slow leak. Right. Mm-hmm. You know how you ever had like a, a basketball or a tire and it's got that little small hole in it. And before you know it, it just goes flat. That's yeah. kind of how inflation man, is, man. It just it just robs you without you even knowing about it. Yeah. And you don't see it. And you don't see it, man. Like my, and my first like recollection of inflation, inflation was like because I was poor as a kid. But like I remember like I, I could go to the store with a dollar and get two honey buns. A bag of Doritos and a 25 cent juice. First of all, I was eating terrible, but like <laughs> that a dollar and 10 cents, I was good. You know what I'm saying? I had a meal for the day. 
And now that same dollar can barely get, I mean, I might be able to get a bag of chips now. So, mm-hmm. so that's, that was like my first understanding of, of inflation as a child, as I grew up. And then when I understood how powerful it actually can be, then it started helping me understand like, oh, this is something we need to pay attention to. And this is something that um, we need to be aware of. So how do you all explain inflation to somebody who doesn't know about money? Like, like what, what's your best way to really get somebody to feel the power of inflation? Because I have a story, but I'll let one of you all go first. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Jacqueline go. I know she's she's the certified financial planner of the group and probably has the, the most technical answer for us. So like, Jacqueline, how would you explain inflation if someone were to ask it to you? One of your clients were like, what is inflation? Ooh. How would you explain it? it it's, it's hard to describe to non-money people, right? But the best way that I can describe it and getting super technical here for a second, because people need to hear this, okay? Listen to me. As a country, we've been printing money since the beginning of our existence, right? Since we were able to print money. 40% of the money that we have printed as a country was created in the last 18 months. Jesus. Jesus. Wait, (laughs) wait, I have to say that again. 40% of all the money that we have created, we've printed as a country was printed in the last 18 months now the reason why george and carter are over here like sheesh because they understand how this works right so they know that that is going to cause inflation rapid inflation yeah rapid inflation right so what happens with inflation if you are sitting in cash you're keeping money under your mattress you're keeping money in your bank account that means that you're losing money because the value of your dollar is decreasing. It just is. That's just how inflation works. It's funny because in college, I had a friend. She couldn't pass uh, her economics class. And so she wanted me to kind of help tutor her. And so I'm trying to help her. It's like her third time trying to pass the class. And she was like, yeah. So I had this conversation with my mom about this economy cl- ec- economics class. And she said that you pretty much have to be crazy to understand how this works. <laughs> <laughs> and <Yeah>. I'm like... <laughs> so i mean i want i ask you all a question it's like let's let's drive it home right here how much do you all think a hundred dollars so a hundred dollars in 1970 40 years ago mm-hmm. 41 how much would that th- would that same hundred dollar bill be worth today just guessing best case scenario 30 bucks best case. you hundred dollar bill a uh, hundred dollar bill a hundred dollar bill how much would it be worth how much would a hundred dollar bill in 1970 be worth today, 40 years ago? Um, 45 bucks. 14 dollars. So you lost 86 percent of your buying power. So that hundred dollar bill, if you framed it and didn't do anything for 40 years, you lost 86 percent of your money. So if it was a hundred thousand, you could do the same math, but that's the power of inflation over time. Yeah, 1970s, which I forgot because I wasn't alive. We saw rapid inflation during that time. 40 year period, you lost 86 percent of your money. So if you had a million dollars, you lost eight hundred and sixty thousand. Right. Having it stashed away in the closet. So so here's the thing. Right. So I think the easiest. So Carter just drove it home. Right. Right there with that point. And that's extremely crazy to even think about. But the easiest way to think about this is right. Okay, purchasing power. Right. Purchasing power. So when you think about inflation, the problem that people have wrapping their head around and why they think having money in the bank is safe is because you see 100 today, you look up five years from now, if you don't touch the 100, you see the 100. The problem is the purchasing power, what you can buy with that 100 has decreased. And we all can relate to this. Think about, like I was thinking about my college apartment, that shit was fly, right? It was like, it was a townhouse. It was like we had, we had all the trimmings. And I want to say it was like 830. And that was a lot at the time. Like, yo, like, Nicole, that was a lot of money, bro. Wow. What is that, Charlotte? <laughs> no, it was in Greensboro. It was like $830. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was two of us, though. It was a town. Okay, $400. You know that's not bad. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But that same townhouse today, right, is probably like $1,600 a month to rent, right? And so imagine if I didn't have an ability to have my money grow as this inflation was happening, right? It's going to be very hard for me to live. That's why there's always this big debate about um, minimum wage. Now, it might not be on your radar because if you're a person that's listening to this podcast, 
you might find you might be someone who is a little more astute. Right. Maybe you're doing decent for yourself because you are making an investment in yourself to do even better. But there are a lot of members of society who are making wages that is, makes it very hard to live. Right. Because of this, this inflation. Yeah, that's a whole nother argument, <laughs> but it's a good point because you bring up two things, one being wages. So if you are in a position where your wages are basically in a box, right? You have a salary job, you have an hourly pay. You are not going to be able to grow with inflation for the most part. Because think about it, if your job gives you a raise, gives you a raise, mm-hmm. you know, quote unquote, of 2% per year, if inflation is running 2.5%, what are they really doing for you? They're not doing you any favors. You're losing a half a percent of your money every year. Exactly. I mean, so the terms. point is... Yeah. <laughs> You got to be able to give yourself a raise. And how do you give yourself a raise? You own a business. Right. Facts. Facts. That's a perfect segue. Let's, I mean, yeah. we, we want to spend most of this podcast on solutions, right? Mm-hmm. We don't want to tell you about the inflation and how it's robbing your money and how you should be scared and there's nothing you can do about it, right? Because we have solutions on being able to overcome this little nagging thing called inflation. So Carter, I want you to start us off like, what are what are what are some of your top ways, or what's at least one way that you can help our folks, help our listeners uh, overcome this challenge of inflation? Absolutely. So, um, as Warren Buffett says, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you're gonna uh, work until you die. So, the, the easiest bad. solution, in my opinion, to inflation is investing because you don't have to do anything to be. If you if you're investing, you don't have to physically do anything to beat inflation. So if you just invest in a, in the S and P 500 index fund or ETF, let's say you get on average 10 percent a year, inflation is running at three percent. So your money is making seven percent because you're beating inflation. So that that's the goal. You want to invest in a way that you're beating inflation and then some. So I think the easiest solution that everybody listening to this podcast can do is simply begin investing. I think one of the easiest investments to make because it takes no physical work is investing in a stock market. And we all know it's you know, most people think it's complicated to invest, but it's really simple. Like go open up a brokerage account, go open up a Roth IRA, buy the S&P 500 ETF, Put your money there, let it sit, automate it, and you're going to beat inflation. You don't have to worry about this person um, robbing you of your money. Because I, I give this stat every every few months on Instagram. If you save, was it? I think it's said uh, four hundred dollars a month for yep. thirty years, you have saved one hundred forty four thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Right? Cool. If you invest that same four hundred dollars a month for tw- uh, uh, twelve months for th- for thirty years, you have one point one million dollars. And the difference from from that is investing in compound interest. So if we just invest, we don't have to worry about this inflation problem anymore. So that's my solution. Love it. Love it. Jacqueline, what about you? What's one of your top picks um, for ways to overcome this inflation situation? Inflation situation. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) Inflation situation. I mean, I agree with what Carter says. One of the easiest ways for you to beat that is for you to just invest. And it's super, super simple. Don't be scared of investing. Like, I know it's always been super intimidating and financial experts are always super intimidating, but it's more easier at this point in history than it has ever been in the history of investing. This is the easiest point for you to be able to open an account for entirely free and purchase investments that will make you money, that will help you beat inflation for almost you know, no fees for minimal cost. It's like, there's no excuses for that. I also think that there's no excuses for establishing other ways of passive income. So Mm -hmm. for example, we had Danielle on uh, the Million and Millionaires Club where she came in and she talked about how to start a vending machine business with less than a thousand dollars, less than a thousand dollars. That's crazy. And People think like, like, oh, you're listening to this. I don't have a thousand dollars. I'm not going to have that to be able to start a, a business. No excuses. You can get approved for a credit card with a limit of a thousand dollars and be able to go start your vending machine business. Yeah. When I applied for my first credit card at 19 years old, they gave me fifteen hundred dollars. Facts. Yeah. Facts. So Facts. You have n- no excuses. What yeah, about you? Yeah. That's fair. You stole my thunder. That was great, man. You, you know, you took the vending machine one right out of my 
Right? <laughs> you you got more. more. Play you, know, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Play freestyler there. at heart, so I can come off the top of the dome. Um, so become your, become your own bank, right? Get on the other side of the equation, right? Like maybe mm. you have that cash reserves, right? Maybe you're like, what can I do with it? Maybe you put some money in investing. Maybe you did what Jacqueline said and you have a business that you own but don't run. That's the key, right? For passive income, a business that you own but don't run. But what's another option? Become the own bank, right? Like set up a process where you can lend money. And there's websites that you can do it where you can you know, do peer-to-peer lending. Or if you want to even go through the process of doing it yourself and drafting your own promissory notes, you can loan money out, right? And get interest higher than um, you know, what inflation is doing and probably still lower than the rate that banks are offering those people, right? So you can lend money out. That can be another way for you to make passive income. Because at the end of the day, your debt is somebody else's passive income. Mm. So depending upon where your cash flow is and what kind of money you're sitting on, you can become the own bank, you know, you can become your own bank and you can loan out money too. So there's endless ways for you guys to do this. And like I said, the pod- goal of the podcast is to be solutions oriented and give you guys options. But if we're giving you guys those options, you guys got to take action, right? So we, what we want y'all to do as of this podcast is we want to want you guys to tell us at least one thing you're going to do in the next seven days to put yourself in a position to start beating inflation, to start punching your silent business partner that's siphoning off cash from your bank account. Right. Is that a deal? Is that fair? Next seven days, let us know, y'all. And I, I think it's a great time to just let people know like how banks work. Like This is what they're doing with your money. If you have uh, $10,000 in the bank, right? If you think your money is sitting away safely in an account, you're sadly mistaken. Okay, right. the bank is giving you 0.000001% interest on holding $10,000 for you. They're now taking your $10,000, lending it to somebody at 10, 12, maybe 15% interest. And your account says 10, but they're running up a bag running on up. your money, running up a bag on your money. So, like, it's not investing is not an option. Like, I don't tell people who I know who I care about that it's an option. I say it's a must. And you can take this advice and leave it, but investing is a must. You have to find a way to make your money work for you. Like I look at my money as little soldiers and their job is to go to war. And the goal is financial freedom. Like that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, cash. That is it. <laughs> cash drop. <laughs> cash drop. For real, I need everybody to understand that. If you understand that, man, if you can make your money work harder than you, you won't have to work that much. So but you know what's you know what's crazy? It is. And you know what's crazy? You know, I've been doing this for almost eight years now. And I feel like I'm at the point in my career where I'm like, I don't even care what you choose to invest in. Like you just have to invest. Do something. <laughs> like you just can't sit there and do nothing. You gotta do something, especially in this time that we're in now. Like We've been, you know, going through the pandemic for over a year and a half. We're dealing with new variants. We're dealing with new shutdowns. We're dealing with inflation. You've got to protect yourself. Right. And how do you protect yourself? You get them sh- soldiers, okay? <laughs> you get them working. You get them going to war for your financial freedom. Yeah, yeah. you know what? And Jacqueline, let's let's take a take a real, real quick break and let's check out a review. Um, because that's what we've been reading them each week and they get better and better. And we are so appreciative of y'all who are tapped in uh, to the podcast and, and enjoying the content because we got so much more in store. But we want to just take a second to shout out one of our loyal uh, listeners. Let's do it. Well, guys, this wasn't planned, but I'm glad that I have one ready to go. <laughs> you always so, have it ready. Yeah, I saw your phone. Yeah, my peripheral strong. I was like, she's ready. I'm going to go ahead and tee it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm good okay. for a good alley hoop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... We had a five-star review from, we're just going to call it Shammy Girl, and her title was Outstanding. I was so happy to come across this podcast by Black entrepreneurs. They're in the trenches, growing, building, and sharing. The topics are spot on and not about fluff, but real tactical things we should be focused on to build wealth. Great job. I will be sharing this with my Black entrepreneur friends. Let's get it. We love to see it, guys. Hey, Hey, guys, that's literally the fuel that we need to keep this thing going, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, this is a uh, our way to give back, right? It's our impact vehicle, right? To have candid conversations, to share game. I, I, last time I checked, when you log into Apple or YouTube, there's there's no, you know, pay here button, right? 
So, you know, when you guys share those reviews, it really helps us uh, to know that we're providing value information. So thank you so much for that review. We appreciate you. Um, and if you send an email to podcast at melaninmoney.com, we will give you a free item from the Melon and Money store. So we appreciate your review. Thank you so much. Love we it. love reviews and we love to give away free stuff. We love to give away right. free stuff. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, I feel like we, you know, we we really hit it hit it home and, and really share people with people like this this issue, right? That is inflation, but also how they can do something about it. Do you guys have any anything else that's really pertinent that the people could take away related to inflation for this episode? Um, I mean, just just take action, right? Like George said, you say, you know, next seven days, what are you gonna do? Right? Learning is cool, but a lot of us are addicted to education, but allergic to execution. Mm. So we have to, as a people, take action. So again, I want to encourage y'all, like, DM me, DM us, shoot us a, a review and let us know within the next seven days, what are you going to do about this information that we just gave y'all? Right. You know what? And here's, here's the next review we want to we want to point out because we want to um, we want to make sure that our podcast is serving you in a way that you want to be served. So as a part of your review, after you tell us how outstanding our show is, add a little sentence there that says, we'd love for you guys to touch on X, Y and Z. Right. That way, you know, instead of us just assuming all of these wonderful topics that we hope that you find value in, it gives us some ideas and quite frankly, selfishly makes our job a little bit easier because then we can just pick from the reviews and talk about what y'all want to hear. So leave a review. And then the last little sentence, just say, I would love for you guys to touch on X, Y and Z. Right. I think we definitely want to have an episode where Carter breaks down, um, you know, the tax loopholes. I know that's everybody's been wanting to know that stuff. But the difference with, with the way that Carter does it with what I've been seeing on the Internet is Carter's credential. And that's no knock on anybody that's doing it, but the challenge is that context matters, right? Like there's all of these loopholes, there's all these strategies. We wanna make sure that we give you those strategies, but also make sure you understand how they're applicable to you and not just post something that will make you wanna buy a course, right? So definitely wanna do an episode on that soon um, because he's the guru, right? He's literally the guru when it comes to this tax stuff. And we also know Jacqueline has a phenomenal financial transformation course Hey, um, it's dropping. I'm not Jack was getting that course done. We put it under the fire. Yeah, we put it under the fire. fire. And she, she was not it. Done. Look, now, it wasn't even about y'all. Honestly, the, the people need it. They needed it. That's why it's here. It's this everything we do is bigger than us, if y'all haven't noticed. Everything we do is bigger than us, guys. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode and we can't wait to see you next week. Peace. Peace.